is at a crossroads. Chuck Schumer has already said it. If we lose control of the Senate, if they gain control, he said everything is on the table. He said he will not waste the majority if they get it again, and they're going to act swiftly. Let me tell you what that means. They're going to pack the Supreme Court. They're going to go from nine justices to 14, to 13 justices, adding another four seats. And I can assure you, they're going to put in partisan activist liberal judges that will legislate from the bench, not interpret the Constitution the way Judge Amy Coney Barrett would do. They want to legislate from the bench because they want to have a permanent super legislative body that they can use to impose liberal policies on all of us. We cannot let that happen. Here's something else they've got teed up. They're going to add two new states, D.C. and Puerto Rico. You know what that means? Four more senators, exactly. Four more liberal Democrat senators that would dilute our voice here in Tennessee. And from a policy standpoint, they've made this clear, too. They want to impose the Green New Deal on us. That would destroy our economy. Absolutely. They want to do this Medicare for all. That means they want to take away the health care that you get from your job to your companies. They want to impose the socialist system instead. And this whole notion of defunding and dismantling the police, that's their policy. We should all give our law enforcement officers a great round of applause. They're working hard every day. I saw our great sheriff, Dusty Rhodes, right back there. Back to blue, absolutely. That's great. That's great. Well, you know, in Chuck Schumer's America, chaos and violence would rule the streets. We are not going to let that happen. And starting this Wednesday, we're going to get out. We're going to get our friends, our neighbors, our family members, get out and vote. Let's send a message. Tennessee can help run up the score. We can take away the Democrats' favorite talking point that President Trump didn't win the didn't win the popular vote. Let's get out and vote. I need your help. I need your vote and appreciate it very much. And we need to support our Republican candidates up and down the ticket. We've got great leadership here in Williamson County. We need to continue that. Tennessee values are conservative values. We need to send that message to Washington. We need leaders like me, like Marsha Blackburn, that are going to stand together and stand with President Trump. We'll stand for the Second Amendment. We will stand up for life, let me tell you. Abortion isn't a human right. It takes a human life. Amen. We'll work with our president to fix this broken immigration system, to build the wall, and to stop sanctuary cities once and for all in America. And we'll stand with law enforcement, the men and women of our military, and our veterans. Let's hear it for our veterans today. We need leaders that will stand up to radical Islamic terrorism and call it what it is. Our nation, our world is a safer place right now because President Trump took out Soleimani and al-Baghdadi. We need to continue to make it clear that we will stand with Israel just like our president did when he moved our embassy to Jerusalem, unlike so many presidents, both Democrat and Republican before him, who promised to do it, yet never did. And we need leaders who will stand up to China. As Mayor Anderson mentioned, before this, I was the U.S. ambassador to Japan. We have more U.S. military station there than any place else in the world. Why is that? Because that's the focus of all of our efforts in the, in the Asia Pacific region. I've dealt with China militarily, diplomatically, and economically. I've stared them right in the eye. Make no mistake, they're the ones that delivered this pandemic to us and to the rest of the world. I want to make Made in the USA the theme of America again. Woo! I 
I'm optimistic we're going to put this pandemic behind us. We've got 100 vaccine candidates in the pipeline right now. They've got five of them in human trials. President Trump has moved this at an unprecedented pace. If you think about it, we'll have a vaccine hopefully inside of eight months. Never before has that happened. We're going to get our economy back. We're going to get freedom and opportunity back in American lives again. We're going to stand up for religious freedom. And we're going to see President Trump, our president, again for four more years. 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 So let's get out and vote. November the 3rd, we're going to send a loud message. The silent majority is going to be there every step of the way. We're going to send President Trump back to the White House. We're going to hold the Senate majority. You're going to send me to the United States Senate to work alongside Marsha Blackburn. We're going to continue to elect strong conservative leaders right here in Tennessee. Thank you and may God bless you. Our uh, majority leader is here, Senator Jack Johnson, and we will not allow this opportunity pass without him coming to share with us. He has a wealth of information, and you heard them talk about earlier that our taxes are low. Let me tell you, he can explain all of that and tell and give us the details on why our taxes are so low. So, Senator Jack Johnson, if you don't mind coming to the stage, please. <laughs> Is it great to be a Republican in Williamson County? Even more important than that, isn't it great to be a conservative Republican in Williamson County? I'll tell you what, I'm so excited. It is such an incredible honor for me to get to represent this county, and I have for a number of years now. I raised my family here, my wife and I do, and Williamson County has been a bedrock of conservative Republican values for this state, and I can't thank you enough for that. I had the honor of not only being your state senator, but I get to serve, I was elected by my colleagues to be the Republican majority leader of the Tennessee State Senate. And let me tell you why that's significant, thank you. We have 33 state senators in Tennessee. 28 are Republican. I like those numbers. Five are Democrat. We like the fact that our Democratic friends across the aisle, they can have their caucus meeting in a medium-sized sedan. Okay? <laughs> the, the, the five of them can. No, all joking aside, uh, Tennessee is a, in a very important place right now, and I couldn't be more excited about Ambassador Haggerty going to the United States Senate and representing us up there. Um, we, you've got a great legislative team here in Williamson County with Sam Whitson, Brandon Ogles, Glenn Cassida. I know you heard from them. And let me tell you, they are warriors fighting for your conservative values. Tennessee is the least indebted state in the nation. Did you know that? Woo! Least indebted state in the nation. As a Tennessee taxpayer, you owe, I think, don't me hold, hold me to the exact number, it's around $200 is what you owe. If you lived in Connecticut today, it's $10,000 is what you, what you would owe. And of course, your share of the national debt is somewhere around $70,000. So we're going to keep Tennessee the least indebted, lowest tax state in the nation. We're going to continue to fight for your conservative values. And again, I just want you to know how grateful I am for the honor to get to represent you in the Tennessee State Senate, which, by the way, the Tennessee General Assembly was rated by the American Conservative Union as the most conservative legislature in the entire nation. And no disrespect to my friends over in the House, but specifically the Tennessee State Senate was rated the most conservative legislative chamber in the entire United States of America. And I get to serve as the majority leader of the most conservative chamber, legislative chamber in the entire United States of America. And that's because y'all send me up there to do that. So thank y'all very much for that. God bless you.
Thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to take a second. I noticed there's some counter protesters today. It didn't happen last time. And I just wanted to say to them um, that I hope that they recognize because I heard somebody saying that Republicans are racist. I just want to make very clear this this was organized by a strong black woman and a Latino man. And our keynote speaker is a black woman, too. But I appreciate you guys coming and listening. You guys specifically have been very respectful. And I really appreciate that because what we need is for people to listen. And they've been listening. So I will give them props to people going by just being disrespectful. You know, I hope those people understand that this party, there's room for everybody. And we've made that very clear. The only value that matters here is that you love America, you love freedom, and you will fight for freedom to make sure that America remains the freest nation in all the world because there is no better place than the United States of America. I'll give you another USA chant. Go for it. It's not, it's not, I'm, I like it. USA, USA, USA. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that this is sort of a, the personal backstory for me. Some of you guys know who follow me on social media that I came as a Hollywood director. So I've directed a bunch of Oscar winning actors, actresses, some of the biggest music stars in the world. And I did just about the dumbest thing you can do in Hollywood. And I went on Fox News and I said, yeah, I'm a Republican. <laughs> it wasn't That didn't go over well in Hollywood. But I did it for a very specific reason. Okay. The most important thing to me is freedom. I would not be alive if it were not for freedom. My family came from Cuba and this amazing country welcomed my family with open arms and my family welcomed it right back. The idea of freedom lives inside me as a fire and that's more important than Hollywood or money or a career, whatever it is. That is the most important thing is that our children have that freedom. So I want to tell you guys a few things that I learned from being inside. And sometimes that's the best way to learn is being inside and seeing exactly what motivates the people who ideologically oppose you. So being inside that system, what I found, and I'm going to give the very basics of it, is just that they intrinsically believe that they're more intelligent than everybody here. They believe that you have no place in the say of where this country is going because they fundamentally believe that you are not intelligent enough to have a voice. That's what they believe. And so they think that it is their job to decide what direction our country goes in and that your job is to sit down and just shut up and take it. And that is not our job. Your place in America is exactly to have a voice. You are the voice. The, the greatest America can ever be is when we the people have the voice, we have the power, and the people in Washington understand that they work for us. So I also want to warn you guys, we're facing a threat, and this is something that we've seen, my wife and I have seen coming for a long time, and it's why we came to Tennessee, was we wanted our kids to have that freedom. But we see a threat that is greater than any threat we faced in the last 50 years. And I, I don't just say that offhand. It's a very serious thing to say, and I mean it. It is the single greatest threat we faced in the last 50 years. And that's why I'm so motivated to do everything possible to make sure that we don't just elect President Trump, but we elect up and down the ballot Republican leadership that will make sure we keep this country great and we make it greater for everybody. I want to give you an example of one of the things that we in America need to be watching out for. I recently had an op-ed I wrote actually for Sean Davis, who spoke earlier, his website, The Federalist, which is amazing. I don't just say that because they printed my op-ed, um, but <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. But um, what happened is I was watching Fox one day, which actually is semi-rare for me. I like to kind of get stuff from all over the board and see what other people are saying and everything. But I was watching, and they had this segment on George Soros. Did anybody see this where they shut down Newt Gingrich when he talked about George Soros? Okay. It made my skin crawl because the idea was that you cannot talk about reality. You can't talk about facts. 
And the most insane part of it is Fox, only a year ago, had covered this, but now was not allowed to cover it anymore. So I dove deep into the facts. I dug into the finances, and I outlined all the DA races he's bought. You have to understand something about DA races, okay? These used to be fairly nonpartisan. There wasn't really much real estate between a Democrat and a Republican running for a DA, okay? They used to be at most five-figure races, 10 maybe $20,000 George Soros is pumping millions into each DA race. Millions. And something else happened as a result of it. He won those races. But here's the crazy part. We now know the names of DAs. We used to not know the names of very many DAs, okay? What's interesting is most of the DAs we know their names now, they're ones that George Soros funded to the tune of one, two, two and a half million dollars. Let's take, for instance, Kim... Uh, Kim Kim Gar well, we'll get Kim Gardner, Kim Fox in Cook County, Kim Fox. You may know her because she's the one who let Jesse Smollett off. Does everybody remember Jesse Smollett's story? The great hoaxer, okay? The old, if, and let me tell you, if any of us did that, we'd be in prison right now, okay? We'd be in prison, and that's where you should go if you lie about something as disgusting as a hate crime. She let him off, okay? Kim Gardner down in St. Louis, another one elected with George Soros' money, is now trying to throw the McCloskey husband and wife into prison because they defended their own home with a gun while people were outside their house threatening to kill them. Does that seem like that's justice in America? Because that's our future if we don't stop what we are facing. Soros will spend any amount of money he needs to to continue this assault on DAs, okay? And what that means is not just functionally about uh, a certain, you know, uh, high-profile case. It means on a day-to-day -day basis they're not prosecuting theft. They're not prosecuting things like public urination. They're not prosecuting any of these, these very common-sense things you need to prosecute. They're not even keeping rioters in jail. They're letting them go. What do you guys – do you guys think that that's the right thing to do? So, you know, this is something that's just, it, it, there's a theme here, because Joe Biden just yesterday, I don't know if you guys heard this, he said that you all don't deserve to know if he plans to pack the Supreme Court. So I want, I, I just, I feel like I deserve to know, but I wanted to ask, maybe I'm biased, do you guys think you deserve to know if he's going to, I think you could be a little louder than that, that was kind of weak. There we go, we deserve to know, okay? This is America still. And as long as we fight, we can preserve this country. But the minute we give up, we won't be able to. So what I want to challenge you all to do, we all have a little bit of leverage in our lives, okay? A lot of people, for some reason, feel like they're not very powerful. But let me tell you what, each one of you is a very powerful person. And you may not know it, but you need to search inside yourself. Find your power. What do you have leverage over? You may be a school teacher. You may own a, a small business. Whatever it is, you use your leverage the way people like Soros would. You need to be unafraid to talk about your values. The minute you're silent, you end up like Cuba ended up, okay? That's the number one thing I hear from my elders who are Cuban is they say, we wish we would have spoken up, but we were afraid people would be mad at us. We were afraid that they wouldn't come to our business. We were afraid they wouldn't be friends anymore. Afraid, 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 afraid. We can't be afraid. So this is the first step. You're all here. So that's good. But we need to get more people out. We need to get on the phone. We need to be phone banking for swing states. And let me tell you something. Jack uh, Johnson, who was just up here, said, you know, almost the entire thing is filled with Republicans here. But we can't be complacent about that. That's the problem. There's a lot of Tennessee Republicans who are complacent right now. And we need to get them off their butts and get them out to vote. And if that means you get into your phone this week and you text message everybody you know and you ask them, do you have a plan to vote? And if they say no, say, is there something stopping you from being able to vote? And whatever it is, you help them fix it, okay? I know that's not our job, but we'll do it. We're individualists. We can make it happen. We can get people out to vote and make them go up and down the ballot so that we elect Republican leadership for the state of Tennessee. So I just want to, again, thank all of you guys. You're so incredible. But we need, we need fire. We do. We need, we need people unafraid. And I just want to hammer that home because... What we're facing is only going to get worse and worse and worse if good people don't stand up. There's this saying that Ronald Reagan used to say. He used to say, um, you know, the thing about our liberal friends is it's not so much that they're ignorant. It's that they know so much they don't know. OK, that quote actually isn't accurate anymore. It's not because, you know, on a, on, and I'm talking about on a leadership level of the party. 
they're definitely not ignorant. And it's not that they don't know what they don't know. It's that they do know. They do know. They know exactly what they're doing now. It's much worse than it's ever been before. And when Joe Biden said, I am the Democratic Party, believe him, because he's lying to you about the Supreme Court. He's lying about fracking. He's lying about his record on everything. So when he says he's the Democratic Party, take him at his word. He's saying that the party is filled with lies. So in November, I'm counting on all of you guys to show up and not just show up, but you make sure you're responsible for at least three other votes showing up. Promise? That was not everybody. That was, okay, now I kind of believe you. All right, thank you guys. Next up we have Rob Smith, the incredible from Fox News. I mean, he's just, he's such an incredible guy. I could probably talk for 10 minutes. He's an amazing veteran. So let's give him a hand for his service to our country. And he's probably one of my favorite people in the world. So thank you, Rob. Thank you so much, buddy. How y'all doing? Now, look, you, you may know me, you may not know me. My name is Rob Smith. I call myself America's favorite black gay Republican. It's a joke. Um, but I want to tell you a story because it is now, we're about three and a half weeks out of this election. And I am one of the new people that has come into this movement because four years ago, I did not cast a vote in the presidential election. I was not a fan of Hillary Clinton. I was not a fan of the president. But this is what happened. I found out that you pay attention to what, not what people say, but what they do. Now, I had come from the left. I was on the left for a really long time because what the left likes to do to people like me is they like to tell black people that you need to be afraid of Republicans because in Joe Biden's words, they're going to put you in chains. That's what he said. They tell gay people that you need to be afraid of conservatives because they all hate you. This is what they say. This is what they do to control people like me on the left. So after the president was elected in 2016, I have to be very honest, I was afraid because I had bought into all of the lies of the left because they had been saying this over and over and over again. I was very, very afraid. But what happened was I stepped back and I got a look at what the president was actually doing. And I said that, why is it that there's so much good stuff going on for this country? We had at, what po at one point, the greatest economy that this world has ever, that this nation has ever seen. We had the lowest ever black unemployment, lowest ever Latino unemployment. We had the First Step Act. We had border security actually becoming a priority and not people just wanting to throw open the border. So I saw this stuff happening and I said, why would anybody not want to be a part of amazing things that are happening for this country? And that was when I decided to come out and be vocal about my support for the Republican Party and my support for the president. Now, to do this is not easy. We all know. We watch the mainstream media. We watch the news. We watch these Hollywood celebrities. We watch all of these people and what they are trying to do, what they are best at is instilling fear in so many other people so that they are not open and honest about their support for the president. They're not open and honest about their support for America. So what they want to do is they want to make it cool to hate America. This is what we're seeing on the left right now. This is what we have been seeing this entire summer as our cities have burned at the hands of Biden voters. Right? Because this is who they are. These are Biden voters. And we have to get to a point. And what I'm trying to do with every single thing that I'm doing in terms of being out there on Fox News or being... Uh, being here talking to you, flying out tomorrow to do a thing in Florida, flying out to do something in Phoenix, all of that stuff, is we have to build a people in this country who are proud of where we are and who want to protect and conserve all of the amazing things that this country has to offer. I came to my love for this country via military service. Some of you guys may know my background, some of you guys may not. I was born and raised in Akron, Ohio. Not a whole lot of stuff going on there. I entered the military at 17 years old. I served in Iraq. I served next to people that 
look some some looked like me, some didn't. We were black, white, Asian, Latino. It didn't matter because what mattered is that we were all serving this great nation of ours. And that is what brings us together. My life's work is to tell people that it doesn't matter what color you are, what your religion is, what your sexual orientation is, any of this other stuff that is used to divide us. What matters is that you love America. What matters is that you appreciate where we are. What matters is that you want to fight and protect what we all love, what we're all here standing to fight and protect, and that is freedom. Just like she said, that is freedom. Now, I'm not going to get too much into left bashing, although I like it. It's one of my favorite pastimes. But we all know what the left's plan is. We all know what they are trying to do to this country. We have seen it with our own two eyes over the past six months. If you would have told me that our cities would be burning at the hands of Biden voters, at the hands of people on the left, I would have told you that you were crazy. But like Robbie said, all of this stuff has been bubbling up for quite some time. What we're seeing now is the culmination of 30 to 40 years of the left taking control of media, of the left taking control of Hollywood, of the left taking control of your public school systems, of the left taking control of these college campuses, of the left taking control of the hearts and minds of Americans who are taught to hate this country. They are taught that that is what's good, that is what's cool. And we have to stand up and we have to fight against that, right? Because look, I wish that this election that we have coming up three weeks from Tuesday, it is crunch time, it is three weeks from Tuesday, and they say this every year, or every four years, and I roll my eyes, they say, this is the most important election of our lifetime, so you gotta get out and vote. They say this all the time. But this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Because what is going on here, it's bigger than, than Trump versus Biden. It's bigger than left versus right. This is America versus the destruction of America. That is what we're fighting against right now. And if you don't realize this, you are not paying attention. When there are Twitter videos of somebody, I think that somebody was literally just executed um, in Denver. And when somebody says that, oh, somebody got executed, and they said, oh, it's just a Trump supporter, it doesn't matter. And they, they, they say these things. And this stuff is so inherently evil. And I want to let all of you guys know that we all watch the same media. We all watch the same news sources. We all see the same idiot celebrities. And the reason why, I step back sometimes. And when I look at everything the president is taking on and everything that people that support the president publicly are taking on, you realize, man. There are so many, I've never seen so many forces in my life conspire to destroy one individual. And the reason why they want to destroy him is because they want to destroy every single person here. And they want to destroy the love for America and the love for this country that I feel in situations like this, that they have in the White House, that we have all over this country right now. This is what they want to destroy. Because if they can destroy the love for America, if they can destroy the togetherness that we have of America as Americans, no matter what our differences are, then they can take over and they can build the quote unquote socialist utopia that they want. And I have to say right now, and I think all of you will agree with me, that America will never be a socialist country. And to keep America from falling to socialism depends on every single person here today. And this is not just about voting, although please vote three weeks from Tuesday for President Donald Trump. But we have to think about ways 
even beyond voting. Everybody is here is here because they love this country. Everybody is here because they want to support our president, because they want to support our country. Think about ways that you can get involved locally, nationally, whatever. This is what we need. We need more of this stuff. And the election is really only, to me, step one. This is step one because, as Robbie said before, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. I'm thinking about maybe running for office myself at, at some point. Maybe. You know, we'll see. Uh, spoiler alert. We'll see. But this starts with the election. And it keeps on going because we need to get fresh, new, younger, diverse Republican leadership all across the country. So... When we have people like, and I'm going to give a shout out to two beautiful ladies that I actually happen to know, Anna Paulina Luna, who is running for Florida 13, who is one of the most amazing people that I've had the pleasure to meet. She is a veteran. She is pro-America. She is pro-Trump. She is anti-socialism. And she is a fighter. Kim Klasik. Running to save Baltimore. And let's just talk a little bit about, you have Kim Klasik running to save Baltimore. I don't know if anybody saw a video that I did. This is a viral video that came out a couple of years ago um, where I went to Baltimore and I saw what was going on in the streets. And, and guys, we need to elect more Republicans everywhere because we are seeing with our own two eyes how leftism is destroying our cities. This stuff is destroying once great cities like Chicago. It is destroying Baltimore. It is destroying LA. God knows I just flew back from New York. I used to love that place. I don't recognize it. It has destroyed New York. And the reason why what the change that we need to make in this country just starts with the president is because we need so many people up and down the ticket at all levels who are advocating for our policies, who are advocating for our beliefs, because I'm going to tell you guys, the left is very good at this. The left is very good at installing puppets that look the right way or check a certain box or whatever. And they're going to use these people to usher in socialism. So what I'm telling you guys is that we need to play the, I don't, I, we don't need to get too deep into the identity politics crap, anything like that. But what we need to do is we need to show the left that we can put young, fresh, new people with new ideas into Congress. And it doesn't matter. And that it doesn't matter what these people look like or any of these, 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 these sort of characteristics that we cannot control. What matters is that we are finding and developing these people that have a love for this great country, no matter what they look like, no matter what their skin color is, no matter what their religion is, none of that stuff. Only thing you need to do, for me, I don't care what anybody, I don't care. All I care is that if you love America, if you love America and you think that this place is the greatest place in the entire world to live in, then, then we're on the same side. We are on the same side. And that is what we need in this country right now. And I'm telling you, from Don Jr. to Laura Trump to everybody else, they get it. And the amount of excitement that they bring to this party right now, we don't know how long that's going to last. I was having a conversation um, with, with a woman that was a fundraiser in New York. I was in New York for a, um, a, a fundraiser for the campaign that, um, that our, our great ambassador, Rick Grinnell, headlined. And she told me, and she was, she was talking to me about, about possibly running for Congress somewhere. And I said, well, I, was like, I don't know. You know maybe I'll go in 2024. I want to I wanna do my podcast tomorrow. You know, like that stuff. And so she sits me down and she says, look, the time is now. We do not know what 2024 is going to bring. We do not know if there's going to be 
this much energy that all of these Trumps and all of these people, like, that they all bring to the party. We don't know what's going to happen in 2024. But we know what we have control of is this right now. We have control three weeks from Tuesday. That is when we have control. That is when we have the power to stand up, to make that silent majority a little bit less silent. Yeah. Right? And so it is so important that we use the energy that is in the party right now to carry more people into elected office. It's important that we get people like Robbie to run for office. I'll do it. You know? He's doing the same. So like Robbie, he's doing the same thing that I did, you know, when people ask me, he's like, no, no, no. Yes. If, yes, I, yes. if I have to, I'll do it. Yes. If you have to, you have to. Okay. Because America needs you. All right. And America needs all of us, because let me tell you something. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. There's a, there's a lot of people that are waiting to talk. A lot of great people that are waiting to talk. But let me tell you something. This election is between not between like I said, not between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, not between left and right. It is fundamentally about socialism versus capitalism. It is about love of America versus hate for America. It is about all of us coming together, no matter what these little, stupid, tiny, insignificant things are that the left uses to divide us and come together as people that love this country, that will fight for this country, that will support this country no matter what. And I want to see all of you guys, plus three, pull that lever for Donald Trump three weeks from Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. You really twisted my arm on that one, so I guess I guess I'm stuck now. Um, thank you so much, guys. I mean, this is just incredible. If I could invite Cheryl, up, oh, there she is. <laughs> so this is the wonderful chairwoman, if you don't already know, of the Williamson County GOP. They partnered with us for this, and she's incredible. We have great leadership in Williamson County. Um, so uh, I'm going to give the mic to her. But before I do, I'm going to tell you a couple things. Um, you can, if you haven't already, get the accomplishments list that we did at growuplive.com. It's a list that is amazing to give to your flippable friends, we'll call them, okay? Also good to give to your very liberal family members because it'll just drive them nuts. Um, but it's all the things that the media does never tell that Trump has done. So, thinking that's intentional. Um <laughs> so that's a good one and then at rallyforfreedom.com you can keep up to date we will do more rallies with more speakers and we will support the Williamson County GOP any way we possibly can so she's going to tell you exactly how you guys can vote and um, what you guys can do but you guys better vote in person that's another thing vote in person very important to vote in person oh. and um, Sally Hall Hitzman Hey, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He can keep it going. He can keep it going. You know, this is actually, this is a good example. No, 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 no. Hey, guys, guys, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Come on, guys. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Come on, guys. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on over. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave them alone. See, this is what they want. They want to distract people. Don't let them distract you. Come on. It's. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's, there's not a car horn in the world that could derail what we're doing. So leave him alone. He's he's very upset by the sight of a of a strong gay black man, a Latino man, and a strong black woman up here that are standing for conservative values. That makes him very upset. This is typical of the Democratic Party in the past. They don't like when black people and when Hispanic people step out of line. So I understand he's very angry. He wants to set the car alarm off. This is typical of the Democratic Party. Just let him have his tantrum. It is okay. Okay? Um, but Sally Hall Hitzman, if you could come up, you uh, you lost your ID. <laughs> your wallet. Your wallet. Here. Where's the wallet at? 
Dusty's got it, but there you go. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over. And if you need to be amplified at all, you want it louder, just tell me. Okay, guys, don't forget to go to our website, which is williamsongop.org. That's williamsongop.org. Go to the website. We need you. We need you to donate. We need you to get involved. Look at what's happening here. Listen, like he said, don't worry about them. We're winning. We are winning. We are winning. You know, my mom always told me, she said, you know, the people who are shouting the loudest, what are they trying to keep you from hearing? And that is the truth. And the truth has happened here today. You have heard the truth, and the truth has set us free. We hope we have brought in new people to come on over to the right side. All right? Listen, we have Trump hats. We have Trump yard signs. You can go over there and see Miss Susan right there. She's helping you out. Help, we'll help you out to buy, to purchase any of those and the Trump flags here. Listen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This has been successful because of you. And we appreciate you. Please get involved. Contact us. WilliamsonGOP.org. Go online. You can um, go on there to sign up to volunteer. And let me say this. Don't forget to donate. Thank you so much. I was just going to mention everybody who's on the email list. I will email you guys links for Williamson County GOP, however you want to support them. Next rally, I expect everybody to bring at least two friends with them, okay? That's the challenge, at least two friends with you. Um, last thought, I would just say thank you so much. You guys have just been, you guys have been so incredible. So thank you. And let's let's keep this energy up. Oh, where's, where's Landon? Where's Landon? I guess she's, she, she went somewhere else. Oh, there she is. Here she is. I'm, I'm just short. Thank you so much. Um, we had a request to end with God Bless America. Would y'all be all right with that? And one last thing. After all of this, if anybody wants pictures, we'll be sticking around and take pictures. We're, we're happy to stay as long as there's people who want to talk and take pictures. So just, we'll be here. Well, let, me say, let me say one more thing. Um, all the volunteers who came to help, thank you so much for setting this up. And... Also, Don Barnett, who is our first vice chair, he is my right arm. If I ever need anything, he is definitely here to help me in everything. And anyway, there's Don Barnett right there. Raise your hand, Don Barnett. <laughs> also, we have four by four Trump signs, and Don has those signs. If you want, if you need those, see Don Barnett. Thank you again. All right, this is dedicated to our law enforcement officers. Thank you so much for being here for keeping us safe and for being on babysitting duty. I know that's not part of your job. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with light from above, from the mountain. To the prairies, to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank y'all so much. Just so you guys know, that was mostly me. You were getting in the microphone. Uh, that was you got a little bit of her, but it was mostly that was mostly my voice. Um, I just want to say too, all, all the people over here, when we leave, just leave them alone. And um, to the people who are upset at us, we still love you guys. That's actually part of the MAGA movement. Is we love you. We do. We love you guys, and we may have differences with y'all, but. We have, we have love for y'all, so I, I really will keep you in our prayers and wish the very, very best for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day just as much as I wish our people have a wonderful day. Our people will not be bothering you, will not be engaging in arguments. It's not productive, but we wish you the best. Thank you, everybody. God bless America. God bless Tennessee. God bless our police officers, and God bless our troops.
I'm going on and turn off. Thank you for standing up. So you guys, you guys are gonna um, get to work, right? Absolutely. Absolutely.